Are we ready to go? Do you want to Are we? Ladies and gentlemen, let me call this meeting to order. This is the November meeting for the Valdosta-Lamb County Zoning Board of Appeals. For those of you that may have never been here, let me explain how we operate so you can keep up with us. I will call each case by case number and case name. Staff will come to the lectern and give us the meat of the request. We may have questions or discussions among board members or back and forth to staff. Once we are satisfied, we understand what is being requested. I will ask if there are any persons here in support or if the applicant is here or someone representing the applicant and would like to give us any additional information, please come to the lectern and give us your name and address for the record. Uh, then give us the information that you would like us to take under advisement. Once you have given us the information, there is a possibility there could be questions or discussions back and forth among members or to, to you. Once we are satisfied, we understand that part, then I will ask if there are any other additional people in support that would like to give us any additional information. If there are multiple people here, if you have something that has not been brought out, please come to the lectern, give us your name and address for the record, and please give us the information. If what you want brought out has already been mentioned or brought to us, please don't keep hammering it to us because we have other cases that we need to move on to. Once we're satisfied we've heard that side, then I will ask if there are any persons here in opposition or if any persons are here that have questions about what is being requested. If you have questions or you are here in opposition, please come to the lectern, give us your name and address for the record. Give us the information you would like for us to take under advice. Once we have heard your information, there could be, again, discussions or questions among board members or to you. Once we are satisfied we've heard that position, I will ask if there are any other additional people that would like to speak. Again, if you're here and you're in opposition or your question wasn't answered, please come to the lectern and give us your name and address and we will address it. If your position has already been previously stated, please don't give it to us again in the interest of time. Once we have heard both sides, generally we will render a decision here today. We do have, un under the bylaws, the option of postponing action until the next regularly scheduled meeting if, in the eyes of the board, parties need to talk or information is lacking. Okay, after saying that, if you have not signed in on the back table, please sign in on the back table for us for the record. The first case that we'll call is application 2014-07. Arnas Urbanus Bonus. I'll get it right in a minute. 2922 North Oak Street. That case has been withdrawn at the request of the applicant. If you are here concerning that case, it has been withdrawn. We will not be discussing. Next case is application 2014-08. Same per person, Arnus or Bonus, 3564th North Crossing Circle. Ms. Tracy, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. This is a case that we've discussed before. It's on the corner of North Crossing Circle and on Austin Road, specifically 3564 North Crossing Circle. It's zoned community commercial and is about 0 0.89 acres. Um, contains a 8,100 square, 8, square foot building, doctor's office. The reason this is in front of you is because the applicant has requested to have some solar screening and some solar panels. Those solar panels are going to be held by cardboard box structures, pictured similarly to such. Um, we've talked to both Dr. Herbonis and his design professional, um, Mr. Jimmy Cohn. We've talked about attaching them for a breezeway or some such um, method. We've talked about leaving them solo, unattached. Um, as of last I heard from Jimmy Cohn, they do not intend to attach the structures. So, so the addition is off the record or not considered at this time. Um, they would still like their original original application to be considered. 
we're counting them because of the carport like structures as an accessory structure. You've got beams that hold up the, the solar panels on top, is kind of a word for lack of a better word. Um, accessory structures are required to be in the side of your yard away from the street and at least 10 feet away from the property line either side of the river. These are located in the front yard, that's your first variance, and a little bit too close to the property line, about seven feet rather than the 10 feet required. That's your second variance, so two variances they're asking. Staff reviewed it, we did have some concerns, did not feel like it met the regulations or the intent of the regulations and recommended it for the night. Just a side note, we do have Kevin Jenkins available. He's our city arborist. Should you have any questions that relate to trees, um, anything like that? Does the board have any questions? Tracy, I'm sure it's on here, but I can't read it because it's so tiny. Yes. What is the height of these? That I don't know. Doctor Bonus may be able. Okay. I've got the pictures, but I just. He's a whole bunch of noise on the. The side looks like a location. How tall are they? That's, all I need is just the height. Yeah. The height is, um, gosh, you know what, I think it's like, it's like seven feet, something like that, just enough to put a uh, seven, I think, and then it, it goes up a little bit, or it depends how you put it. Like this one is actually, it actually I think it's short. They probably got seven and a half and something like that. They're probably going to be at least seven and a half to eight feet. Right. Any other questions for staff? Uh, any other questions for staff? Any discussions from the board at this time? Do we have plans to maybe revisit what the label of accessory structure? First, I mean, because this falls under the accessory structure yes, usage, if you will. But in the future, I mean, do we have plans to identify this as covered parking or? Matt, Matt is aware of POA concerns. I know he's got some proposed amendments coming up in the next few months, but I do not know if covered parking is one of those for us. I just think for our benefit that we need to identify. Any other questions, discussion? How is how will these trees affect the performance of the solar? Well, yeah. is that something that you think will take? I can't answer how they will affect the solar structure. My main concern is is him um, not putting in these solar structures and not being able to achieve his maximum or what he expects. Expectations of solar panels due to the canopy and shade of the trees, and then coming back at a later date, wanting to either trim the trees, trim the trees to the face of the auditorium uh, or the face of the value of the trees, or possibly remove the trees. I also have a question about the trees. In this photograph, who owns the trees? Whose property are the trees on? In this picture? Well, that's that's not up. Dr. O'Byrne, the bonus, please come to the lectern. Those will most likely be on the business property. All right, Mr. Bontes, uh, my address is uh, Fort San Andrew, Circle, Alaska, Georgia. Okay. The question was in this particular picture. So oh, in this picture, who owns the tree? Okay, that's a, that's a, that's a com, com, this is not us. That's correct. <laughs> that's what people say. That's not us. Who owns the tree? It's California. The they were just next to the parking lot. Parking lot, just like okay. here. Yes and no. He can prune the trees, but he can't 
come in to take more than 30% of the canopy off at one time, and he can't prune the trees to the point where he can face the value of the trees right. or destroy the trees. Okay. Yeah. I would like to look at kids. Actually, if you look at the plan, the north is right here from this side. South is there. So as you see in these pictures, you know, that that's in the middle of the day they're taking it off. And you see the shadow goes you know, the other way. The shade, is, the shade goes this way. So you never, you never hear you know, on the solar installation from the north, what is from the north. Because from the north, sun is never you know, is there. So you, you basically carry what is from the south. And, and that's totally clear on that side. And we'll tilt them you know, a little bit, actually, this way towards the sun. So it's, it's not an issue. We, we'll, we don't really care you know, what's there on that side. Okay, but if you look, the trees are right on the property line, or right on the boundary of the parking lot, he's still going to have to come and prune those trees up. These trees so are pruned up pretty high, actually. If you go you know, to like the dentist's office next, they prune pretty high, actually, much higher than we need. Right. So My main concern is lights. not having the trees destroyed. When were these pictures taken? Because, okay. as we know, the sun changes at different times of the year. Three months ago, I think, when we first visited this, I went out and sat there in the middle of the day. And I could not understand how you were going to get these to work based on where the sun was at that time, 12, 12.30. In the morning? Right, middle of the day. And I'm thinking, how are you going to get these things to fit under here and to be able to perform the job that they're supposed to be? based on where the sun was that day. You know, it depends on the, the time of the day and the time of the year. There will be some, you know, it's not going to be optimal production. Right. But, uh, you know, you care most about the, the sun, you know, from the 11.30 or from 12 o'clock, you know, and then until about 4.30, that's the next. And if you capture that, I think that's already, it makes sense to have it. I know it's not optimum installation, but uh, I strongly believe for the green energy. Uh, I just would like to have one. Have you considered the rear end of the, rear of the property as well? We talked about it about the one on Oak Street, but have you considered the rear of this property? Well, we looked at the, every corner of that property, and really, there would be, it would not work. In all honesty, there's not, there's not, there's not a lot Exactly. In the back, there's really no room unless on the side, you know, this. Unless you put it on the roof of the building, there's no, no room in the, in the south side. There's not room right there. I think I spoke about this once before. My main concern is the study of the trees. Because I'm concerned that they're going to be destroyed. There aren't any obstructions from the highway to all these various buildings. My concern is the aspect of uh, deteriorating the, the aesthetics of these particular architects all the way down Old Street, North Valdosta Road, St. Augustine Road. That's my main concern because these are main arteries into the city. And uh, I'm not opposed to, to uh, solar energy. In fact, I'm opponent energy, at the same time, I have other concerns dealing with the aspect. Uh, people put a lot of money in these architects and these buildings, and they look very beautiful. They don't even look like office buildings, by the way. They look like mansions all the way up and down the North Carolina Road. My concern is to make sure, make sure that it remains as it is. I could say it. it's pretty far from the road, actually. This, that's why we drew the first one, because it was closer, and I thought it we probably have, you know, we're not going to, this, this is, as you see in the pictures, it's, it's a cut, cut a bit from the road and it's down, actually. It's, it's, it stays down, so what you're going to see, you're going to see just nice blue, you know, line behind the trees. Not in front of the trees, but behind the trees. And that would, I guarantee, is going to look really good. All right. Any other questions or discussions? But you had another purpose for was it just for the solar energy? It's also the patients could park underneath of the, they can park, you know, and they can get in and out of the car, you know, and it's like a canopy for the patients, for the 
sun in the summer is would not be heated, the cars would not be heated that much. And as you see that one of the pictures there, you know, these are dialysis clinic, and they're very sick patients. And they they really would appreciate that. I have a whole bunch of uh, petitions that patients signed. And they were very much in strong support for this. And I have a 400 plus of the petition signed for the patients asking for this. You know, if we can, there will be another purpose for that. So it would be dual purpose for for the green energy and for the protection. These are not waterproof, are they? They are not totally waterproof, but but you definitely can stand uh, underneath of them and, and stay pretty dry actually if it's raining. And actually, they really good for the shade. They are very good for the shade. Any other questions or discussions at this time? Is there anyone else here in support of this application? Is there anyone here in opposition or has questions as to what they are requesting? Was there any contact to your office that you're aware of? Okay. Any other questions, discussion, ladies and gentlemen, before I call the question? Can I get a motion on this request? I make a motion that we grant the variance as requested. Um, because this is not uh, accessory structure in the typical sense that we think about it. And because of that, we need a new rule. I have a motion on the floor from Ms. Porterman to grant the request as presented. Is there a second? Motion fails for lack of second. Can I entertain another motion? Of motion that this variance be denied because there's a full proof that there's a hardship involved. I have a motion on the floor from Dr. Howell denying the request. Do I get a second? Second. I have a second from Ms. Howell. All in favor, please raise a hand. One, two, three, four, five. All opposed, one. The count is five, one in opposition. Talk to your city council people, we'll see if we can get full clarification on this, see how the city council feels about it. Maybe we can do it at a later date, but it is right now it's it's too far in the future for us at this point. Thank you for working with me. Sorry. Right. <coughs> the next <coughs> the next application is 201-4-10. Atlas Sign Industries, 1082 North St. Augustine Road. This is a sign variance to the sign regulations. It's for a multi-tenant uh, facility located on the corner of St. Augustine and North. About 23 and a quarter acres and three parcels. Right beside Chick-fil-A, it's got Hobby Lobby, it's got the, it's got the new um, affordable ventures on the same parcel. Um, community commercial and the reason the applicant is here there is a new restaurant coming to town new tenant that intends to stuff about out now parcel kind of behind the chick-fil-a on st augustine road they would like to have a freestanding sign this is a little bit of an unusual situation in the sense that it is a new development but because of steep grade on st augustine GDOT and engineering is not permitting a sign. Well, they're not permitting an entrance because of the steep grade. They believe that it might push or propose people might have accidents because they can't see. Because of not have not being allowed entrance, that gets them out of having a sign. Multi-tenant facilities are allowed to have signs. They have to be within 50 feet of an entrance. If there isn't an entrance, they can't have signs. Because we reviewed the case, they're proposing something that's, that could be permitted under today's regulations with the exception of that entrance clause. So they're asking a variance to that specific area of the land development regulations. We do realize that there is hardship involved. We can't control the grade, they can't either. So we reviewed the request, found there to be typographical issues, and we do recommend for a variance. 
Any questions? Any questions from the board at this time? Yeah, I've got a question. <clears throat> There's only one access or in, uh, ingress egress, and that's the main one over there by that other restaurant. It is. No, the actual two. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, that's, the, there's one right here. that's the big one. There's one right here, and there's one right here. And there's also the one way down at the end. Right. right. There's a restaurant that's going to go right here. So there's not, a, not an entrance within the Is that right, right next to Chick fil A? Yes, sir. Yes. Well, there are actually four entrances one way down on the south end. Right, I forgot that. And then there's right. one at Stacy Shake, the main entrance, and there's one over on St. Augustine. Right. Back to two on St. Augustine. They're proposing a sign, as you've seen, on it, something that they could permit ordinarily under the LDR. Less than 124, up to 125 square feet, up to 35 feet tall. But unfortunately, I can't because it's not within 50 feet of the entrance. And they're going to meet all the other criteria, height, top area, they, area. They're, they're required to be within 50 feet of an entrance. Um, entrance is not permitted. They're required to be at least well, 125 square feet or less, 35 feet or less, and at least 300 feet from another side. They can they can meet all of those with the entrance. Okay. Clause. When they talk about uh, breaking ground. That I don't know. The applicant may be. Yeah, Sorry. Yeah, Any other questions, discussions from the uh, Board at this time. Thank you, ma'am. Is there anyone here in support or the applicant here wishing to give us some information? Please give me your name and address for the record. Sure. Good afternoon. My name is Jennifer Ronberger. I'm with Abbott Sign Industry. My address is 1077 West Blue Brown Boulevard, West Long Beach, Florida. And I have a presentation on the website. I think I need my glasses on. And you've got the this is one of the Panda Express. This is a sign bearing this is 50 inches thick. This afternoon, we're going to respectfully request approval of the following proposed variance of Panda Express restaurant, which is to allow a pylon sign on the proposed property located at 1000 St. Augustine Road in Valdosta. Just as Tracy said, that's the location for the Panda Express. It's going to locate the new restaurant within Maldosta Mall Corners. It will provide jobs for approximately 50 employees. <coughs> Excuse me. The proposed restaurant would occupy the vacant space at the northwest corner of the Mobile Town Arrow parcel in North Mahogany Lot and next to Chick fil A. And before we do this, I just want to give you a little bit of history about Panda. Panda Inn was a fine dining restaurant in 1973. The first location was in Pasadena, California. And after the success of the Panda Inn, they opened and expressed in 1983. The quick concept became a pioneer in the fast food Chinese market. Okay, Panda Express then and now. After 1983, they have um, expanded all across the country. The top um, photo was their very first location. And then in 2012, they introduced their bright and fresh design concept for the next generation of the new look of Panda Express. This is the building that's coming here. Very cool, huh? Next is also about Panda Express. Panda Express gives back. They're committed to giving the time and resources to support the communities. Panda Care promotes the spirit of giving and servicing the health and educational needs of underserved children. It launched in 99, the company-wide community involvement initiative dedicated to providing food, funding, volunteer services, and children's organizations, and disaster relief efforts has raised more than $28.8 million for charities and causes in the United States and internationally. Fan Express also celebrates diversity by bringing cultures together in a touring of roses parade each year. Panda Express currently has over 23,000 associates, 1,600 stores, and 47 states and abroad. Panda's mission statement is to deliver exceptional dining experiences by building an organization where people are inspired to better their lives. Now, back to our location. <coughs> As Tracy had said, this site is zoned, highly commercial, and this parcel is not within an overlay. The grading issue here, the parcel is approximately four to five feet below the elevation of St. Augustine Road. And again, the parcel is currently in the parking lot for Hobby Lobby. The site currently is not subdivided at this point, but Hobby Lobby is located on 13.6 acres, and this parcel would be 0.8 of an acre parcel. 
The code section we're seeking relief from is code 230-9B4, which is Principal Street. One sign for 500 feet of fraction in a row, but not to exceed one sign for the driveway. Now these are some photos of the existing location. As you can see, St. Augustine Road and then the slope here, that's about a four to five foot difference. That's excessive. And of course, there's nothing that can express the property owner or anybody else that is not a self-created hardship. This is from the other side. As you can see, along the, with the low elevation, the building setback, and the visibility of the, green, uh, the, uh, the evergreen trees and bushes on the corner of the site, visibility is really hindered for this location. This is the existing multi-tenant sign that's out there with the Little the Corner. There isn't any space on this sign for a tenant panel for them. And also, Camp Express is also sectioning off this and creating a separate out parcel. So having a sign on this, a tenant panel, would actually create an off-premise sign issue as well. Okay? And again, as Tracy had said, this is what we're looking to do. Our sign does meet code in every aspect. It, um, actually, I believe code is 35 feet. Overall height, we're asking for 30. 125 square feet is the code. We're asking for 119. And we will conform with the five foot setback that's required. And that red arrow shows approximately with the development of the sign. Um, development of the property is to where it will be located. Okay? Literal enforcement of this sign would deprive this new business of sign disclosure for to other similar businesses. All other out parcels along St. Augustine Road are permitted their own freestanding sign. A code does permit one ground sign at the location because this will be a separate out parcel. And that's it. Um, this location is looking to open up around March. I do have a representative from Camp Express and the property over here as well. Representative, if you guys have any questions for us. There was a question when we might be starting, somebody had. Mm -hmm. yeah. March. We'll open up right around March. We look like you have a question. Uh, <laughs> any other discussion? Any other questions for the board at this time? You're welcome. Yeah. You look like you were. This is going to be a single tenant building, correct? Yes, that's yes, correct. Three stand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just want to make sure it's Three only for one right sign for one, one occupant. It's going to be a multi occupant building, and we're only improving the first no, portion no. of it. Mm -hmm. They're going to be in there. That location that I showed you before in Denton, that's what the building is going to be looking like. Any other questions? Any other discussions at this time? Does anyone else here support would like to give us information that we don't currently have? Thank you. Is anyone here in opposition or does anyone here have a question about what being what is being requested? Was there any contact to your office? No. Okay, any other discussions, questions, anything from the board at this time? Can I get a motion on this request? I move to approve. Dr. Zender? As presented. I have a motion on the floor from Mr. Ornstein to grant as presented. Second. I have a second to Ms. Hobby. All in favor, please raise your hand. Unanimous, good luck. Please make it look good and hope you succeed. Thank you very much. We're looking forward to coming to town. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> oh, it's the Carmella Show. <laughs> when I introduced the Carmel okay. Show. This is Lowndes County case variance 2014-13 Bill Nigem on behalf of Brian Tuxton, 2779 Harold Walmer Road, Valdosta. Thank you very much. You have the podium. Yes, sir. Good to see you all. Um, this is a variance request to redevelop the property um, residentially. So the property consists of about one acre and it's the applicant's applicants desire to, again, redevelop the property. The property currently has a legal non-conforming use. The non-conformity is that of a single-wide uh, manufactured home. The 
current R1 zoning um, under the adoption of the OVC only requires um, homes to be a certain width. Um, in this case, a, a double wide or a site built home with at least 21 feet wide. Um, according to the applicant, the existing home was damaged um, due to retrieval, and it's his desire to redevelop the property with a similar um, residential structure, hence the variance request. Property is located in a residential area. Um, there's a mixture of housing types. Um, staff looked at this. We really didn't see an um, issue or a concern with him redeveloping the property with another single lot. Um, we think the property would blend well with the, with the proposed home. Um, with that, the TRC recommended approval, citing criteria B. The applicant um, did cite several criteria to support the variance request, and we recommend approval. The applicant is here if you have any questions. Thank you, ma'am. Any questions, any discussions at this time? Yes, sir. There was a site, there was a note here that uh, indicated that the person you have to remove. Yes, sir. Thank you for bringing that to my attention. We did recommend approval with one condition, the condition being that the existing manufactured home be removed prior to the final inspection. And I believe they probably by now have demolished the home that's there. And the applicant can answer that question. It's in the process of being Okay, and this, this is a rental. This is not somebody bringing the trailer in that they would own the trailer. Yeah, the one that was there, a, a, a tree fell across in the middle of the night when I destroyed it. Could we get your name and address for the record? Yes, Brian Tuckey, 4094 Whitewood Road, Dodge. Uh, a tree fell across the one that was there in the middle of the night, and it was beyond repair. So, uh, the, to, to go with the bigger mobile, the tenants have been there can't afford a bigger mobile home. I mean, it's older, power bill. Uh, you know, the cost will be what you have to pay to move two trailers in there, so it's just it's more feasible and you know economic for them to for me to put a single wide there so they can afford to stay there. And when I went through, I didn't see I don't recall seeing any doubles in there. It looked like everything was single in there. Yes, sir. Okay. Any questions, any discussions from the board at this time? Yes, I do have a little Yes, they had already started taking the mobile home okay. down, and then when our meeting got postponed, then we, we stopped. Even though there are other single wives, they look like they are kept up and they're in good repair, mm -hmm. which that picture is not very really impressive. Yeah, well, that is not the mobile home. That one, you know, I had an agreement to buy that one, and I was going to repurpose it. Well, when right. the meeting got postponed, they wouldn't hold it for me anymore, so now I'm, I'm shopping. But no, it, it will not be an eyesore option. Any other questions? Any other discussions? Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else here in support of this application? Is there anyone here in opposition to this application, or is there anyone here that has questions? Is there any contact to your office call? No. No, sir. Any discussions, ladies and gentlemen? Just to clarify for me, please. Sure. Um, we're not granting approval to to simply replace one single wide mobile home with another single wide mobile home. We're actually we're actually making an exception to the design standards. Is that correct? They will, in essence, replace <coughs> a single wide with another single wide, and the request is a variance to the design standards. Um, the design standards for the R1 says it has to be 21 feet wide, no vinyl skirting, etc. So we are re re granting that a variance. But we don't know now what the proposed replacement is going to be. No, that was news to me. Um, we were under the impression that you know the home at the bottom was going to be the one um, that was going to replace the existing. I guess what I'm I'm just trying to think ahead. I'm, I'm trying to think, you know, is it really right that if, if, if you 
got a, a, a mobile home that's damaged by an act of God, if you will, and we were playing, I mean, is it fair to say, okay, you've got to come pay the, the county X number of dollars and go through the process and delay everything? Blah, blah, blah. I mean, where, when can we get to the point where some of those exceptions are made administratively? Now, I understand if you were coming to present and said, okay, well, and then that's in essence what we're doing, but, but the, the proposed mobile home is not going to have a skirt and it's going to be, you know, half the width and, you know, I, I see the need for that. But I mean, here we're basically approving something that you could have approved without knowing what we're approving. It's really, in a nutshell, what we're talking about. Here. Yes, sir. Our, our non-conforming regulations are tight. And this is a discussion, ongoing discussion, that the county planner and I have been having, you know, in a case like this, an act of God, you know, is that something we can do administratively instead of paying the $450 application fee? Um, the non-conforming standard says if there's damage that's more than 50% of the value, then you can't replace it. Well, that's, that's pretty tight. Um, and we're looking at other areas in the county because we've done a lot, a, a number of these requests. And to me, with the number of variances, that tells me either something is wrong with the code or something is not quite right with this. So it's an ongoing discussion we're having um, with the county planner and the board. And as a question, 